Hello, my geek fam. A few years ago, we have studied Picasso in his African period, but several of you requested to see if there was a difference in his Cubist period. And boy, is there a difference. Hi, everyone. Yes. Today, let's see if we can do a portrait in Picasso's Cubist style. Don't forget to like, share and comment to this video. Give me your suggestions, challenges, ideas for future videos in the comments below. Also, if my little video inspires you to do the same, share your art on social media with the hashtag MGFCPaint for my big family cotton paint. We talked about Picasso's life before, his very early genius and his prim and proper art education, but what we discuss less about him is that he was really the engine behind the Cubism movement. We saw his African period, which was before his big Cubism period. In the early 20th century, Cubism emerged as a seismic shift in art, challenging convention. Led by Picasso and George Braque, this movement broke down and reassembled subjects offering multiple perspectives simultaneously. The name Cubism came from the fact that Picasso wanted to show all the sides of a cube at the same time, a bit like when you unfold a box. Picasso's Les Demoiselles d'Avignon in 1907 exemplified this geometric revolution deconstructing faces and introducing African and Iberian influences. Pablo Picasso, often hailed as the father of Cubism, was a guiding force in reshaping artistic paradigm. Beyond its visual aspect, Cubism became a philosophical lens, transforming how artists perceive form and space. Through collaborative effort with Braque, Picasso's analytic cubism and synthetic cubism expanded artistic horizons, influencing not just painting, but also literature and architecture. Picasso's indelible mark is seen in Guernica in 1937, a powerful response to the Spanish Civil War. Cubism and during legacy inspired movements like futurism and abstract expressionism. Picasso's innovative spirit left an indelible mark on 20th century art, ensuring Cubism remains a cornerstone of modern artistic exploration. So, let's try to deconstruct and rebuild a face while keeping the elements that make that face recognizable. I will explain to you how I tried this. If you follow my little videos, you know that my models are usually my wife or my kids. I have three sons, and if the eldest is always game for a pose in a costume, you have seen him in numerous videos from a Rembrandt's medieval boy to a Caravaggio's rendition of Bacchus, it is sometimes more difficult to get my youngest to participate. He basically gave me two conditions to share his likeness in my video. One, that I use existing pictures to get his likeness, no special pose for him. And two, that the style I feature would be more abstract than realistic. Picasso is therefore right up his alley, but as a proud father, I still want the portrait to look like him, both in the facial feature and in his spirit. You see, he's a talented musician, very passionate about his art and playing several instruments, French horn, guitar, upright bass, and his main instrument, the bass guitar. I therefore want to show him playing his bass and use color to show passion when he's playing. I thought that maybe a little flustered cheek in red or warm colors, contrasting with a cooler color in other parts of the face would do the trick. Then I looked at his photo from the front and from the side, trying to see what were the elements in his face that really make him recognizable from both points of view. I confess my experience in caricature helped a bit because he 
you must go to the instantly unique detail with a tiny bit of exaggeration. From the front, I want to show his strong jawline, his blue-tinted glasses, circling a sensitive eye below a thick and decided eyebrow, and his mouth slightly pouty from his focus on music. From the side, I want to show his straight and Achillean nose, and once again his tender look gazing confidently in his creative thoughts. All this should be topped with his flock of seagull signature hairstyle. This time, let's not prime the canvas, I mean more than the gesso it comes with, and start putting the elements together with a quick pencil sketch. Picasso was drawing directly with paint, but I wanted to see where everything would land on the canvas first and still have some space for the bass guitar. With a thick, almost creamy black paint, we start outlining all our elements, creating small pockets of white that will soon be filled with color. Do not hesitate to show your energy in the outline. Be daring, bold, take decisions. Now is the time to fill up all these whites. Start with primary colors and see what works. Try some patterns. This is your time to experiment and see what colors translate the best the feeling you want to show in your painting. The idea is to fill everything and get a rough idea. Don't worry, we will adjust the colors later, but it is always easier to have something to correct than starting with something blank. Now it's time to refine the colors. My first base colors were too colorful and gave more childish vibes than the idea I wanted to convey. Remember that I wanted to show the importance of music as a passion in the life of my model and therefore bright colors should only be used for this. The rest should feel more subdued. So I start refining all this a bit, producing more mauve grays leaving the warm tones only for the guitar and the first cheek. I try to use more gradients to help with the subtle nature of my subject.
all these cover the lot of our original outline from our painting. With the same black, you can retrace the outline. There will be some changes because the colors made the portrait evolve a bit, but still transmitting with your brush the energy and the assurance of your lines. Basically, don't hesitate and be bold in your choices. Now is not the time to fiddle about what goes where in front of what. Show commitment. Also, if you remember the African period video, Picasso has always loved crosshatch to complement his colors. So use them, straight, diagonal, cross, use black, white, and gray. For Finally, take a good look at your canvas in general. See where it is balanced or not and add some details where they are needed. For example, at the last minute, I added a bigger earring because it balanced the side of the face with the nose and occupied more of that big empty space on the side, where the rest of the canvas was loaded with detail. Add reflections and light flares if needed, a thicker shadow here and there. And there we go. I think we have successfully managed to show all sides of the face, as it is in Cubism, and still underline the emotional passion that music brings to my son's life. We have stripped the portrait of all classic measurements and constraints and use color as a vector for emotion. Let me know how you do on this little exercise, and I will see you next month. Cheers.